Ask Yuri. You've got a health and fitness question? I've got an answer. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. Today is Friday and that means it's Friday. This is the episode where I take a number of your questions and I answer them all together. And we're going to make this actually even more exciting because I haven't even looked at these questions yet. So it's really going to be uh, off the cuff improv, but I'm going to, I'm going to give the goods to you. Um, so the, the, before we get into that, the one thing I do want to mention is that I'm in, um, I'm back in video mode. I've, I've, I've gone off video for, I don't know how long, but it's something I love to do and it's very natural for me. So what I'd like you to do is I'm going to be pumping out daily videos on YouTube, exercise videos, nutrition videos, ask Yuri videos where I'll be answering all your questions as much as possible. And if you'd like to get access to those, again, they're absolutely free on YouTube. Uh, somewhere on this video up here, I think there should be a button that says subscribe or something of the sort. Uh, basically, just click on that and you'll instantly be subscribed to my videos on YouTube, which means that you'll get daily videos from yours truly with uh, with some great content. It's just, it's I'm here to, I have so much to, to share with you and I have so many questions that I really want to do my best to get all this information across to you. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. You're going to love the videos. If you have any questions at all, by all means, uh, best place to post them actually is on Facebook. I rarely check my YouTube comments or, or questions just because there's some suspicious people on YouTube sometimes, but there's also some amazing people. So that's just the way we roll here. Anyways, with that said, let's get into our first question. I'm just going to pull it up here. All right, so this one comes from Lisa. Uh, who posted a question on my Facebook page, uh, and here it is. Hi, Yuri, I was wondering if we exercise without food, say in the morning, at which point or time, or sorry, at which point or time would we predominantly be burning fat? I was on the understanding that after 20 minutes of exercise, we would then begin to burn fat or burn into the fat stores. And also at what point will we be burning the muscle using continuous cardio? I asked this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's, let's, get to the to the gist of this uh, let's take the first part of the question which basically means uh, so she's she's wondering if we exercise with the food in the morning at which point would we be burning fats okay so let's just tackle this first of all I believe that exercising on an empty stomach first thing in the morning is a very very good thing to do if you can maintain a good intensity during your workouts considering you're not eating any food beforehand so early morning cardio, early morning workouts on an empty stomach is a great way to really tap into those fat stores for fuel during the workout. So if you can do that, that's great. Personally, I can't. I really excel. My actually, my, my best time for working out is like seven or eight at night. Personally, that's for me. In the morning, what I'll do is I'll often go for uh, maybe some light cardio. Maybe I might do some intervals on the treadmill. I might take my dogs for a walk. I'll just get my body moving. That's pretty much as, as best I can do at that time of day. However, uh, so, you know, if you can work out in the morning, that's great. Now, in terms, if you haven't worked out in the morning and if you're just working out during the day, um, if you're working out without, without food, it's, it's almost impossible for me to say at which point are you going to be tapping into fat. If you work out, you will tap into fat eventually. Okay, so don't worry about the little nitty-gritty details. Realistically, your workouts are only going to account for about 10% of the calories you burn anyways. The majority of it's coming from food. So don't nitpick the little stuff that doesn't matter too much. Second part of that question is that also what point would be uh, would we be burning the muscle using continuous cardio? Again, like I don't know everyone's different. Uh, you know whether it's 30 minutes or 32 minutes or if it's 75 minutes or 120 minutes. It's impossible to say it really. What I can tell you though is that if you're looking to preserve muscle, then you should not be doing long duration cardio. Okay, you should be using short, high-intensity intervals where you're increasing testosterone levels, which preserves muscle mass, and you're actually burning more fat at the same time. Okay, so interval training is the thing to do if you want to burn fat and save your muscle, which I hope all of us should be after. Right? No one wants to gain more fat and lose more muscle. Right? So... Uh, Lisa, hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you very much. And next, we will move to a question from uh, Davidas. I, hopefully that's that's pronounced right. Uh, again, he's asking from the Facebook page here. Hey, Yuri, I've got a question for you that no one else answers me. It's about infrared sauna. Can you give me your opinion about it? And most importantly, about infrared sauna and hypertrophy, basically muscle growth-based uh, workouts. 
I got some infrared saunas in my gym. Is it okay to go there after workouts, maybe before, how often? Okay, so um, saunas are going to do nothing for muscle growth. So if you're under, you know, if you're under the understanding or the assumption that if you go to a sauna, that's going to help plump up your muscles, it's not going to do anything. Uh, some people go to saunas to think that they're actually burning fat, so they'll wear like jogging outfits and, and garbage bags, and all that's doing is dehydrating you. So make sure you go into a sauna with a huge thing of water and drink all of it in there. Okay, the sauna is not used to dehydrate yourself. Infrared saunas do have some healing benefits. Uh, there have been some, some studies and a lot of anecdotal experiences which show that infrared saunas can speed the recovery process slightly. Okay, So, you know, in terms of getting rid of lactic acid, flushing it out, I don't really think there's any benefit to a hypertrophy-based workout program. If you're looking to build muscle or if you're looking to burn fat or if you're just running for a training for a marathon, there's really no difference in benefit added from using an infrared sauna. It's not gonna hurt you. Uh, obviously, you don't wanna go crazy with that. But um, yeah, I wouldn't use it before workout. I'd save it for afterwards. It's gonna help flush out some of the toxins and lactic acid from your muscles, but it's not gonna help you gain muscle. So hopefully that answers your question. And uh, there we go. Next question, we're gonna do two more questions here. All right, so let's get to this question by Anne, who says, who's asking, hi Yuri, I was wondering if the scale used in the gym for measuring fat Muscle and water composition is accurate, more or less, or not at all. I just took one test this morning for the first time and I'm skeptical on results. I have doubts on the body fat percentage on my results on the muscle in arms versus legs. Okay, so and so what I'm assuming here is that you're referring to perhaps the biological impedance, because I'm not too sure which other scale would be able to measure all this stuff. So either something you stand on or a handheld device which measures the water composition and thus the body fat versus muscle composition in your body. So muscle contains more water than fat does and it sends its current through your body so it generally kind of gets an idea of, you know, of, of that difference. So the problem is that it really depends on your hydration status. So if you're dehydrated, it could potentially show you as being higher body fat than you really are. So is it accurate? It's, you know, it's good enough. But again, you have to make sure that when you're testing, you're well hydrated. If you retest, you have to make sure that you're at the same level of hydration, like hopefully the same time of day. There's a lot of confounding variables, okay? So take it with a grain of salt, use it as a benchmark from which to work from, and then measure over the course of a couple weeks, okay? But I wouldn't say this is the, the be all and end all uh, with respect to, uh, with that question. So um, really, very simply, just pinch your skin. I mean, you know, take, uh, take the back of your tricep if you're to use skin fold calipers, which are not commonly used anymore. Uh, just, but it, just by kind of pinching yourself, you can tell you can pinch the back of your tricep, you can pinch right around your belly button, you can pinch the side of your chest, um, and there's a couple other areas in the body. But if you, I mean, if you're picking up a thick amount of skin, you know there's a lot of subcutaneous fat there. So. That'll give you a general indication. It's not gonna tell you exactly what your percent body fat is, but if you're picking up a huge wad of fat, you know you have some work to do, but I'm sure that's that's not your case. So thanks for the question, and let's move to our final question. I've got a bonus question for you this week. That's where we four questions in this video. Pretty cool, right? All right, so last one here. This is actually sent to us by email. Uh, Yuri, what is your opinion of honey as a sweetener and stevia as a sweetener? Also, what is your opinion of raisins? Thanks for your advice. Ed. All right, good question. Honey, I enjoy it if it's raw or manuka honey. It has a lot of uh, nutritional benefits. Again, it can spike your blood sugar slightly, so just don't go crazy with it. It's really helpful for you know if you're using like uh, if you're using it for baked goods or stuff like that. You know, it's obviously it's okay, but again, you know, use it in moderation. Stevia, I really enjoy. We're actually using a lot more stevia now in our healthy baking recipes that we're that we're kind of cranking out. So we'll make like a lot of like healthy versions of cookies or healthy versions of whatever, and we'll use stevia instead of honey, just because stevia doesn't have the blood sugar impact that honey does, and it's it's really really good. So it has a little bit of an aftertaste. So you just have to kind of find the right level that's going to work for you. I wouldn't use stevia in like coffee or tea necessarily because it's going to over the it's going to overpower the taste of the beverage. Um, raids, raisins, um, they're good. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't really eat raisins um, by themselves. I'll put them into certain dishes, but again, they are high glycemic index, so don't go crazy with them. 
Uh, if you're going to use them in any recipes, just also, you know, as a sweetener, then that should be okay. Just, again, just understand that they are higher glycemic index and you don't want to overdo them. So with that said, that brings us to the end of another FAQ Friday video. Thanks again for your questions. Hope you have a great weekend and don't forget to subscribe somewhere up on this video to my videos because you don't want to miss anything that I'm coming out with. I've got tons of great stuff coming your way and if there's something you want to see or if you have a question, remember to join me at, on Facebook. You can just try to type in my name, Uriel Kane, and you'll find my page somewhere because we have this long weird URL that I can't even give you. And uh, in the meantime, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.